Good afternoon. Today we are going to read out of the book of Exodus chapter 33 specifically. We are in the part of the story where uh, Moses is up on the mountain uh, with the Lord and uh, the people below just can't wait. Uh, they think that Moses has been gone a little bit too long so they erect um, an idol. Uh, Moses comes back from uh, being with the Lord down the mountain and of course um, he addresses this issue of idol worship and he crushes this idol, sprinkles it into the water and uh, makes him drink it. We are at a crossroads now here because God had promised that he would bring his people into uh, the land, uh, this, this land of Canaan. But um, the people are just a little bit, um, let's just say they're not obeying. So let's pick it up here in chapter 33 and see what the word of God has to say. So the Lord said to Moses, leave this place, you and the people you brought out of Egypt. And go to the land I promised an oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying, I will give it to your descendants. Now, so far, so good. I will send an angel before you and drive out the Canaanites, the Amorites, the Hittites, Perizzites, Hivites, and the Jebusites. Go up to the land flowing with milk and honey, but I will not go with you because you are a stiff-necked people, and I might destroy you on the way. Now, this doesn't sound like... Uh, a good thing for the Israelites. You can go ahead and try to conquer the land, but I am not going to go with you. We know that throughout the entire um, experience, God has gone before them. They have not been able to do anything apart from God. So to go without God would be futile, would be the end. So let's see what else we can learn from the scripture today. When the people heard this distressing words, they began to mourn and uh, one put on any and they wouldn't put on any ornaments in other words that they are they're, they're just sad uh, they know that they're in trouble no celebration here let's see what God has to say for the Lord has said to Moses tell the Israelites you are a stiff necked people if I were to go with you even for a moment I might destroy you wow now take off your ornaments and I will decide what to do with you so the Israelites stripped off their ornaments at Mount Horeb now Moses used to take a tent and pitch it outside of the camp, some distance away, calling it the tent of meeting. Anyone inquiring of the Lord will go to the tent of meeting outside the camp. And whenever Moses went out to be with the Lord into the tent, all the people rose and stood at the entrance of their tents, watching Moses until he came uh, out of the tent just to see what uh, his interaction was. In other words, they are observing what Moses is doing. They know that Moses is meeting with God and that God is really not very happy with them. Whenever the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the entrance of the tent, they all stood and worshipped, each at the entrance of their own tent. Well, this is awesome. At least they are worshipping the Lord. They hopefully have learned something. We shall see as the uh, journey continues. The Lord would speak to Moses face to face as one who speaks to a friend. Then Moses would return to the camp. But the young aide Joshua, son of Nun, did not leave the tent. This is now Joshua being trained even by Moses without even realizing that later on he would be the one in charge of these people. This people that the Lord took out of uh, the land of slavery. Moses said to the Lord, You have been telling me, lead these people but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. You have said, I know you by name, and you have found favor with me. If you are pleased with me, teach me your way so that I may know you and continue to find favor with you. Remember that this nation is your people. Here is a, a humble servant uh, speaking to the Lord. And I pray that that's our request also. Lord, teach me your ways that I may know you more. We read the word. We pray. We need to know who it is, this God that we serve, this awesome God of the universe, this creator, and of course, the savior of the world who eventually sends his son Jesus to die for the sins of men. This is God. Praise the Lord. The Lord said, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Then Moses said, if your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us? What else will distinguish me and your people from all the people on the face of this earth? So 
Here we go, uh, uh, chapter uh, 33, verse 17. And the Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing you've asked because I am pleased with you and I know you by name. Then Moses says, now show me your glory. And the Lord says, I will cause my goodness to pass in front of you and I will proclaim my name, the Lord, in your presence. I will have mercy on whom I have mercy and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. But he says, you cannot see my face, for no one can see me and live. Then the Lord said, There is a place near me where you can stand on a rock. When my glory passes by, I will put you in the cleft of the rock and will cover you with my hand until I pass by. Then I will remove my hand and you will be able to see my back. But my face must not be seen. This indeed is the mercy of God. Uh, Moses crying out to God and saying, you must go with me. If you do not go with me, I won't go. Because Moses realized that no victory uh, was a victory apart from God. There would be an annihilation of these people. Slavery was uh, where they came from. And who knows where else they would be. But apart from God, they would not be free. They would not have provision. And they would not be able to conquer this land that God had promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This has been Exodus 33. I trust that the Lord is revealing to you from his word a little bit more about his character, his mercy, and his grace. Well, till next time, to God be the glory. Bye-bye for now.